everyone, it's Kelvin, and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, we're going to go back to basics, and I'm going to show you how to paint this super simple two-color wolf illustration. And this is one of those illustrations that offloads a lot of the work to the paper texture. So we're able to keep the uh, sketch and the colors uh, very simple, but it still ends up looking really nice just because of all that kind of fine detail that just naturally occurs. So I've already got a watercolor paper texture loaded into Procreate, and today I'm using the Forester paper texture. And I chose that one because it's like a slightly more interesting uh, kind of textury version of the storybook texture. And for the brushes, we're going to be doing all this with the brushes in the regular watercolor kit. And as usual, I'll put links to everything I use in the description below. So I've already got the sketch placed in here, and uh, as usual, you guys can have this one. I put a download link in the description. I've just placed it up here as the very top layer and then set the transparency mode to multiply. And then after that, I'm just gonna select a blank layer underneath the paper texture, uh, and this is where I'm gonna start painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab the abstract round brush and also this kind of gray color, and I'm just gonna quickly and roughly fill out the silhouette of the wolf. So I've gone way beyond the edges, but I'm gonna fix that uh, in a minute here. Right now, I wanna use the water blender brush and I'm just gonna kind of smooth out some of these overlapping strokes, but because this is a pretty primitive illustration, I'm gonna leave a few more kind of artifacts uh, than I usually do. And after that, I'm gonna use the eraser brush and I'm gonna set it to the fine liner pen. And I'm just gonna go along the edge of the sketch and just kind of cut it back uh, so it fits it a little bit better. So there we go. It's not perfectly fitting the sketch, uh, but I think it's good enough. Now it does look a little bit too dark, uh, but that's okay because I'm gonna add some highlights and stuff and it's gonna balance it out a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a highlight on the face. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'll make a kind of U-shaped selection across the face like that. I'll feather it out quite a bit, hue saturation and brightness, and I'll brighten that. Now the nose is gonna be slightly darker, so I'm gonna grab the selection tool again and just sort of rough that out. Hue saturation and brightness, and I'll just darken it a little. And after that, I can move on and work on the lower half. So I'm basically gonna bring out the legs and the tail just by highlighting them. So I'll grab the selection tool again. It's still set to freehand, and I'll just kind of trace these out. Then I'll go to my adjustments, and I'm just gonna raise the brightness. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now, there are these kind of weird hard edges, so I'm gonna go over it with the water blender, just big enough to kind of fit in between there and kind of smooth out these joints. And I'm also gonna blend the top of the nose here in a second. Yeah, so the top of the nose, uh, you can see it more clearly if I just turn off the sketch. There's a faint kind of hard edge there, so I'm just gonna carefully blend the top of it up. Next, I wanna add a very, very light shadow underneath the scarf. So I'll grab the selection tool again, freehand, and I'll just trace out where that shadow might go. Then hue saturation and brightness, and I'll just darken that. And that's it for the body of the wolf. Next, I'm gonna move on and work on the scarf, and that's gonna be on its own layer, so I'll make a new layer and I'm gonna do a long press here to grab that red color. Then I'll use the abstract round. And just like I did on the body of the wolf, I'm gonna roughly fill out the scarf. And it ended up pretty smooth, so I don't think I need to use the water blender on it, but I am gonna use the eraser again. It's still set to the fine liner pen, and I'm just gonna cut it back so it fits the sketch. Next, I'm gonna use the selection tool and kind of slightly adjust the brightness of each of these kind of three main parts. And that's just to give it a little bit of depth. So for example, the one in the back here, I think I'll darken it a little. And this one down here, I think I'll lighten it. And that should be enough to kind of set off the different layers here. Now for the shading, it's pretty easy. 
I'll just make a selection that covers those areas. Hue saturation and brightness, and I'll darken it. Now the pattern is really easy, but I want to kind of adjust it so it's very, very faint. So I find it's easier to do that if I just make another layer, make the pattern, and then adjust the opacity. So this time I'm going to change the brush to the fine liner pen, and maybe around 20%. I'm just going to rough out kind of a random triangle pattern. And after that, I'm going to adjust the transparency. And I think this is a good chance for me to explain why I like to use the multiply transparency. So as you can see here, uh, these two colors, the pattern and the scarf, they're really similar, so there isn't a lot of contrast. Whereas here, they're really different, so it stands out a lot. So the pattern is on its own layer, and it's set to normal right now. And when I change that to multiply, it makes sure that no matter what, this layer is always darker than the layer underneath it. So you can see we've got kind of reasonably good contrast over all the different shades in the scarf. And to adjust the opacity, I'll just lower it down and then slowly raise it back up just until the pattern is barely there. The reason I'm being careful about uh, the opacity is because I don't want the scarf to be the super focal point. I really think the focal point is gonna be the face with those kind of white glasses. So I'm just gonna make sure this is kind of subtle. And once you're happy with that, you can just pinch the pattern and the scarf together just to merge them onto one layer and keep it kind of simple. And this next part is optional, but I want to add some random kind of ombre color variation in the scarf. And I'm going to do that with the selection tool set to freehand. And I'll just make a crazy selection like that. I'll feather it out quite a bit. Hue saturation and brightness. And I'll just shift the hue a little bit towards maybe a warmer tone, I guess. There we go. And it also does look a little bit flat. And I think it's because this kind of curve is supposed to be kind of cylindrical, but there's no shading. So I'm going to add some really simple shading to make it look more round. So I'll make a selection over here. We'll do add. I'll make another one over here. They're both active, so I can feather them out at the same time, just like that. Hue saturation and brightness. And I'll just darken those a little bit. And it's a really subtle thing, but it does make it kind of pop out a little bit. And next, if you want to, you can add a little bit of detail kind of on the fringe of the scarf. So what I found looks good is if I just select them both at the same time, and then I'll lighten them, and I'll desaturate it, and then I'm gonna go over it again, and I'm gonna do this kind of jagged pattern like this. Then I can go to my adjustments, and if I darken it, it just adds a kind of interesting detail kind of on the ends there. Next, I'm gonna move on and add a couple of outlines just to bring out the contrast a little bit more. And I'm gonna do that on its own layer. So I'll make a new layer above the scarf. And just for now, I'll turn off the sketch. And for the color, I'm gonna select pure black. And then I'm gonna use the fine liner pen brush at a pretty small size, maybe like 8%. And I'm just gonna go in there and outline anything that just needs a little bit of help. So around the nose especially. And then when I go around uh, the edges of the body, like around the ears, I'm gonna do a broken outline. So it's not continuous. It has a lot of gaps and it does vary in thickness quite a bit. And I'm just gonna go over the whole thing and do this wherever I think it looks good. And after the outline is finished, um, I want to use the same kind of trick I used on the scarf. So here's the layer with the outline. I'm going to set the transparency mode to multiply. And then again, I'll lower it to zero and then slowly raise it back up just until it's barely visible. And again, I don't really like outlines that much, so I'm going to do it pretty faint. And next, we can finish this up just by adding in the face details. And those are really simple but I'm gonna make those on their own layer. So I'll make a new layer above everything and I'll turn the sketch back on and I'm just gonna use black and white uh, to fill in the glasses and the eyes. And I'm also gonna add some lines on the front feet just so there's kind of like toes. And there 
there we go, this one is all done. And here's what it looks like when I print it out. Now, if you remember the hedgehog video I did last time, it ended up being uh, a little bit too long. And I wanna know what you think. I think the main thing I'm just trying to avoid is a lot of repetition in my videos. So if you don't mind uh, videos that have a lot of fast forwarded sections where I'm doing some kind of broad uh, painting, uh, let me know and I can give it a try. And with that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.